Hello, everyone. My name is Iñaki Iglesias, and I work at Technalia Research and Innovation, which is a private R and Spanish R&D company with around 1,400 employees. I work at the aeronautics department, and my team is focused mainly on aeronautical electrification research. As you can see, my main position is head of technology, and I lead the research about aircraft electrification and new aerial concepts. But in my position, there are also two other words that say innovation futurist. And now you are probably wondering, which is a futurist? And I can tell you that it has nothing to do with making predictions. The role of a futurist is to make projections, typically to define strategic actions or to help in decision making, and normally based on a wide spectrum of signals and trends, combining usually a science like mathematics or engineering with other kind of data coming, for example, from social sciences or economics. And uh, I'm here doing this keynote because three years ago, I had a projection about their taxes. Uh, at that time, I convinced my boss that my projection was reasonable, and he let me spend some money to create a quite different kind of air taxi. During this experience of developing an air taxi from scratch, I was able to see how much of reality and hype was in the business. And that is what I would like to share with you today. To begin with, I would like to put the idea of the air taxi in context. Even though the idea of the air taxi looks like something new, it's not a new idea at all. In 1999, a, a curious work titled In the Year 2000 was published by some French artists. And in this work, they were all kind of futuristic engineering developments. And of course, they were air taxis. As you can see, the idea of the vertiports, the airports that are in the upper part of the buildings, uh, was also something that they foresee. Uh, but nevertheless, as you can see, they were very optimistic regarding the seamless urban integration. In the 50s, air taxi concepts began to show up in very popular magazines, like this example of popular mechanics. With more science and engineering behind, these concepts already looked a lot like some of the current concepts based on multicopter architectures. In 1982, a director Ridley Scott, Blades Runner film, was released in theaters. And again, the air taxis appear. This time with very current features, such as the autonomous flight, for example. And these are just a few examples showing that the idea is not new, but then why was this idea not successful in the past? Between 1965 and 1968, Pan American World Airways offered 10 minute connections between John Fitzgerald Kennedy Airport and Manhattan. They resumed the service in 1977, but in May of the same year, the rotor blade of a helicopter broke on the roof of the Panam building in Manhattan, killing five people. And that was the end of the golden age of helicopter-based air taxi services. In the following years, other companies continue to offer flights between LaGuardia and Wall Street. But in 1997, the mayor of New York uh, began to reduce flights due to safety and noise issues, as you can see in the image. To this day, Ubercopter offers an air taxi service from Manhattan to John Fitzgerald Kennedy Airport, but the price is more than $200 per ride, and it's still based on conventional helicopters, showing past disadvantages such as noise, high cost of operation, or safety. And, uh, and now, uh, after seeing the lack of succeed in the past, I'm going to show you which have been the three key technological advances made in the last 10 years that have greatly affected the air taxi developments. Regarding the technological advances in computing power in the last 10 years, here you can see the computing power comparison between the iPhone 4S from 2010 and the current Apple Watch. And, uh, the computing power of the second is twice the computing power of the first, just in 10 years. For an air taxi development, this means more computing power to control all the systems with less weight and less energy consumption. 
and all are good features to, to design an aircraft. Power electronics, which is the common name of the devices needed to control the electric energy coming from the battery to the electric motors, have also made great advances in the last 10 years. You can see in the following image, the size of a Toyota Prius power control unit in 2010 and in 2020. During the last 10 years, this power control unit has reduced its volume by 80% and the weight has dropped from 18 to 4 kilograms, basically using silicon carbide-based semiconductor technology, which also reduces electric losses and therefore increases efficiency. For an air taxi, this will mean that we could have powerful propulsion electric motors with a lighter, less bulky, and more efficient power electronics to fit them. As for propulsion engines, Currently, uh, the common internal combustion engine used in a small aircraft such as the one in the image have hundreds of different parts and can offer around 70 kilowatts of nominal power with a weight of 64 kilograms. While an electric motor with far fewer parts, like this one, can give the same 70 kilowatts of nominal power with only 26 kilograms weight. That means that the electric motor with fewer parts easier to manufacture and more reliable is also able to offer more than twice the power per kilogram of an internal combustion engine. For an air taxi, this is again an advantage as you can put more power with less weight. So for now, there is not so much hype in these technologies, but now I will show you the main technical issue that probably most of you are already aware of, which is, uh, yes, the battery. In this image, which shows a forecast of the energy density increase during the, the next years, you can see in the left y-axis, the energy density in watt hour per kilogram. And in the lower x-axis, the year. As you can see, there is information from some relevant national initiatives like the American Department of Energy Battery 500 Consortium or the Chinese National strategic plan made in China 2025. But also the roadmaps of big battery cell manufacturers like KTL, Gaussian, Lisseng, or Calvin. As you can see this year, 2020, the battery cell energy density should be around 300 watt hour per kilogram, being about 400 in 2025 and 500 in 2030. This is for sure a great increase in energy density in the next 15 years. But anyway, a kilogram of gasoline or jet fuel has around 13 kilowatt hour per kilogram or of energy density. And this is twice the energy density of the lithium ion based cell we will have available in year 2035. This at least in my opinion means that with the current lithium ion cell roadmap will be difficult to have long range full electric air taxis in the close future, even considering the overall efficiency increase of using a full electric powertrain. And uh, after analyzing the technological constraints, I will to present two types or human scenarios to which air taxis are being oriented. This is the first scenario in which there is high population density and dedicated infrastructures such as vertiports. This scenario is planned for firstly offering quick transport from the center of large cities to airports or suburban areas. And uh, these trips are usually long distances at high speed. The second scenario with less population density and more dispersal landing areas is planned for daily interurban personal transport, complementing the current urban transport offered like the bus, train, taxi, or, or your personal car. They are usually short distances at lower speed. The first scenario with dedicated infrastructure may have a closer future deployment, although the second, in which the infrastructure is less expensive, could be also a good candidate in more rural areas or between Iceland, not very well connected, as the Japanese government is proposing. In this last case, uh, safe corridors or even restricted air spaces could be defined to smooth the, de the deployment. 
Related to these two deployment scenarios, current aircraft can be divided into two main types. In the first scenario of longer distances and speeds, this, uh, there are aircrafts that land and take off vertically, in which high speed and range prevail, despite not having such high stability in takeoff and landing. They normally have a top speed between 200 and 300 kilometers per hour and a range between 50 and 100 kilometers. The aircrafts on the right, on the other hand, are more oriented to the second scenario and have usually multi-copter architectures. And they offer a greater maneuverability and stability in takeoff of landing at the cost of not having such high top speed, top speeds or autonomy. And now that you have an overview of the key technologies involved, the scenarios and the types or air taxis, which are the full deployments roadmaps of the different countries. Here you have the, the NASA roadmap where you see different dates for all the required technologies or actions to be developed during time. You can see, for example, actions related to the air traffic, like the operator certification or licensing, or others related to the vehicle, like the certification or air wealthiness and others related with operations like the surveillance or the autonomous flight. But anyway, they foresee that all these technologies and actions will be fully deployed during the next 10 years. In the roadmap defined by the Japanese government, you can see more details about different topics to be developed, such as the remote control from the ground or the development of technologies to increase the range of the aircraft. But as you can see, uh, the date uh, for a full deployment is still also within about 10 years, in 2030. And, and now, after this overview of the current uh, status of technologies, as scenarios, aircraft types, and country roadmaps, I'm going to show you an overview of our air taxi development, which is called Lauren. We started the development with the problem opportunity question, uh, just performing a review of uh, what was on the market and the state of the art related to air taxis. Doing this, we found that there were basically two types of air, taxis, air taxi designs. Those on the left, there were more efficient increasing at the cost of being less maneuverable in takeoff and landing compared to those on the right that were more maneuverable and stable in takeoff and landing, but not so efficient in cruising. This is basically because multi-copter architecture has uh, to tail when increasing the speed, and this greatly affects the generated aerodynamic drag and downforce in the cruising phase. During this study, we found that, that in the middle, there was a space for a deeper, different type of air taxi that uh, for sure will gather the advantages of the two existing types, offering more maneuverability and stability when takeoff and landing, but also more efficiency in the cruising phase. After this study, we defined the, the aircraft mission, considering all the previous technological limitations that I have been showing before. And with the current technology, we concluded that the technically feasible mission to carry one passenger, what, what we call mission 1515, which consists of making 15 kilometers range or 15 minutes of flight. As you can see with this mission, you could cover the city centers of 85% of the world cities, excluding of course, mega cities. And it's in some cities like Paris, for example, you could cover the whole city center. After identifying the opportunity and defining the mission we could achieve with existing technology, we developed Lauren, which is a, a new concept of overactuated air taxi. Overactuated means that all movements of the aircraft are independent of each other. And for example, we can always keep the central cabin in the same position through the whole flight. Unlike uh, existing multi-copter architectures, for example, and this increases comfort and acceptability of future users. This feature is achieved by creating what we call a, a drone or drones, which is basically 
uh, a central cabin where the passenger go where the passenger goes, and four quadcopters that move independently of each other. This achieves a very good stability in the main cabin, maintaining always the same horizontal position during the whole flight. The characteristic of being overactuated also makes it possible to provide a greater maneuverability and therefore stability when facing adverse situations, like wind gusts, for example. And finally, uh, I will show you a video of the Maiden flight in which you can see how the quadcopters move independently to give the aircraft improved stability. <laughs> 